it's a big deal to win an Olympic gold medal. I mean, the Olympic Dream Team is iconic for a reason. So I'm not here to dump on the Olympics or to try to cheapen the meaningfulness of winning a gold medal for your country and standing on that podium. We saw Scotty Scheffler uh, move to tears after he won the gold medal in golf. We saw how much the tennis gold medal meant to Novak Djokovic is that was really the fifth major, I guess, if you will, in a sense, in, in tennis. And you could argue that it's the fifth major uh, in golf as, as well. So Ronnie Carmelo, he would rather have his gold medals than have an NBA championship ring. Is that, in your opinion, of a valid opinion or, or do you think he's off track here? I mean, it's absolutely a valid opinion. I, I don't know what other people would think, but, and I guess I feel like an NBA championship would be harder to win, but I think winning a Olympic gold medal would be more prideful. So I guess it just all, the, the thing that matters is what, what, how do you feel? And he clearly, that's what's important to him, but I just, there's just up until, I mean, there's a couple games where in, in the Olympics, the, the U S uh, has competition, but overall they really don't. And the NBA playoffs are a grind. Uh, so I can see why he says that. And the cat, what do you think Jordan would say? I think Jordan would say that he would rather have a uh, NBA championship because He's a stone cold killer. And I think he like, I think he likes the grind and I think he likes, I, th I think he likes, I think he likes the grind. Did you just say that you think Michael Jordan likes grinder? <laughs> no, that's what you what heard. You, I said, what did you, the you grind. Like, okay, I'm sorry. We have a, we have a bad connection. No, he, he likes the grind. Well, look, I mean, he and Kobe were both, very much, um, they had a different mentality. They had a different gear. A mm -hmm. and, but, but then again, Kobe brought that mentality to the Olympics, right? I mean, we've all seen how he told his teammates, hey, I'm gonna run over Pal Gasol, my teammate. Uh, a guy, Pal Gasol said that Kobe Bryant's, you know, almost like a brother to him. And he just ran right over him at the, at the very beginning of, uh, a game just to set the tone and say, Hey, look, we're, we're coming here to run you guys over tonight. So guys like Kobe and Jordan, they're going to bring that competitiveness to any environment that they're in. I mean, the stories about both of those guys, they were maniacs uh, in, in a sense. So let's take a look at the question that a lot of people ask, and I just don't, fully get it as a as somebody who grew up watching prime Michael Jordan the who was better who's the goat LeBron or MJ I just don't see it as even an option it's like it, it just isn't close it's like asking me if I want to drive a Corvette or if I want to drive you know a Camaro all right. I mean, Camaro's great. Uh, mo most people would love to hop in a Camaro and, and drive around and it, it's awesome. There's not a thing in the world wrong with a Camaro, but I just don't think that Michael Jordan and LeBron James are cut from the same cloth. I will go to my grave saying LeBron James, Hey, look, Camaro, you know, that's probably not even doing him justice, right? Maybe he's a Corvette and then Jordan is, a Lambo, however it is you want to look at it. Jordan is on a different level, in my opinion. Ronnie, do you think that LeBron, the people who really, and there's people who really, really stick up for this. You can see my tweet here. I said, if you're under 30 and you think that LeBron is better than MJ, you need some coaching. If you're over 30 and you think that LeBron is better than MJ, you're just fucking stupid. I understand, I understand why why LeBron is in the argument because he's amazing, right? Like athletically, he is amazing. He can do things on the basketball court that probably Michael couldn't do. But if we're looking at the entire body of work 
And that is everything from, from the physical part to the, the mental part to the championships. You're right. There's, there's just no difference. And I'm sorry. When I think about Michael Jordan, I, I, I used it already. It's just stone cold killer. Every game was ridiculously important to him. And when I think about LeBron, I sometimes think about him flopping and just being a, a prima donna. And he just, he just, he's just not Michael Jordan, but he's still amazing. The fact that people argue who's the GOAT tells you how good he is, but he's not Michael Jordan. Ron, do you remember back when Michael Jordan used to flop all the time? No, I don't remember. I remember him getting his head taken off by the Pistons, but I don't remember him yeah, flopping. Yeah, I don't remember when he flopped either. Yeah, you know why you don't remember it? Because it didn't fucking happen. Okay, that just wasn't something that, that he did. Look, LeBron, I, I think LeBron has a great claim on being top five all time. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put him behind Kareem. I, I'm, I'm putting him behind Kareem, but I think he has a, I think he has a valid claim to, to be as high as number three. Um, it, you know, if you wanted to say he was number two, I would disagree with you, but I don't think that that is, uh, I don't think that that's an absurd opinion to have. So this isn't really about uh, crapping on LeBron so much is, as it is respect the king and his crown because the real king is that man that you see on your screen right there. And I'm not talking about uh, the man below me I'm talking about the man that you see uh, there in the in the Bulls uniform. Although Ronnie T-shirts is certainly uh, in the conversation for 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 greatest cornhole players uh, in America. We may be having that debate in ten years, Ron. Uh, people challenging your status as a cornhole uh, expert. But look, uh, Michael Jordan was a ten times ten years in a row. If we throw out the a little short season. You know, he took the year off and played baseball. He came back late the following year. I think he played maybe 17 regular season games, something like that. Uh, he was wearing number 45, uh, Ronnie, is, as you probably recall. Mm -hmm. And they lost to the Orlando Magic in the playoffs that year. But it's sort of like Rocky V. I just don't even view it as something that really actually happened uh, in real life. I choose to think that uh, that was just a year that Michael Jordan took off. So they won six in a row, as I see it. And the 10 regular seasons in a row around the baseball uh, two years that he, that he took the hiatus, he won the scoring title all 10 years. And he was defensive player of the year one of those years as well. So a as I said, people ask the question, well, what did Michael Jordan do better than uh, LeBron James, and my answer to that would be offense and defense. In the simplest terms, he was a better offensive player, 10-time uh, scoring leader. I think LeBron has one scoring title. Jordan was the defensive player of the year and was first team all defensive many times. Uh, I know that LeBron has never won defensive player of the year, and I don't think that he has as many uh, all defensive honors as well. You could argue certainly that uh, LeBron's a better long-range shooter. LeBron's a better passer. But uh, LeBron also has lost in the NBA Finals six times uh, while Jordan went 6-0 and in the NBA Finals. And, and people will say, and I understand the argument, it's not, a, it's not a silly argument to say, hey, look, LeBron got there 10 times. Jordan only got there six times. LeBron dragged some teams there that weren't very good. LeBron didn't have uh, Scottie Pippen uh, all six times. I mean, he did have D. Wade and Chris Bosh uh, in Miami, and he has had talented players around him uh, throughout his career. But you can, you know, say the longevity. The biggest thing that I would give LeBron, and the place where LeBron, I will say, uh, he surpasses Jordan, is in retaining his skill level uh, to the ripe old age that he is now. I don't think we've ever seen anybody play basketball at such an elite level at the, the age that LeBron is. By the time that Michael was the age that LeBron is now, Michael uh, 
was in the Wizards phase of his career that uh, a lot of us from Chicago and, you know, let's face it, a lot of us who uh, just are basketball fans in general kind of would like to forget. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I just think that you're correct about the, the longevity thing. It's absolutely, it's mind-blowing. Just being a regular person, because he's I think he's going to be 40 this year. Is that correct, LeBron? Pretty sure he's going to yeah, be 40 believe, this year. I believe that's I believe that's right. Yeah, so, I think he's going to be 40 like uh, like the New Year's Eve or Yeah, I think like that's that. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, do you know all the celebrity birthdays? Um so I th- I know <laughs> I know LeBron's for some reason. Um, we we exchange cards every year, right? <laughs> I, Maybe not after today. If he sees this segment, uh, I know. I know I'll we're just be getting one. I know we're just regular people, and some would say below regular people. But I know I can. Tr- I can try to remember back to when I was forty, and remember what it just felt like just to get out of bed in the morning and just to do simple things. And the fact that he is still—I don't know—is he's probably still top five players in the world. Close. It's absolutely I mean, astounding he's, he's, he's right there it's astounding that he physically can do this and so props to this guy for what he's done to keep his body in this shape absolutely and just back to what i said he's not the goat but that's okay because michael jordan was the goat like it's it's not it, even if he is second i know you don't think he's second it's it's not a bad thing to be second to michael jordan no, there's no shame in that whatsoever. I mean, LeBron James is one of the finest ever. Even even if you're going to look at me and say, well, hey, Ricky, you're being a hater. I don't think I'm being that much of a hater. I'm saying the guy's top five. Maybe he's as high as top three. Um, so nothing against LeBron, but there, there, can, there can only be one MJ. And it's I never thought within my lifetime that I would see people questioning his status as the greatest player of all time. And yet... It only took about 20 years for a lot of people to legitimately believe that Michael Jordan is not as good as LeBron James. And yeah, but, um, but recency, you know, recency maybe that's biases. What How much can we trust history? Yeah. Well, How much can recency... we trust history, Ron? You know what I mean? Well, the things that we think we know about a hundred years ago, what if we could just resuscitate all the people from a hundred years ago? How many of the things that we believe are true today, would the people who were alive then say, oh no, oh my God, you motherfuckers got this completely wrong. Yeah. It's something to think about. You know, as time goes on, we think that we know the truth about everything that happened, but sometimes I I think it gets distorted. Yeah. I I think recency bias is is a real thing and it's true with that was the best concert I've ever been to in my life. That was the greatest meal I've ever had in my entire life. That was the, oh my gosh, this is the greatest TV sh- series I've ever seen. Like, so we are all really, really guilty of recency bias. And a lot of these people who are having the argument about LeBron, they didn't watch Michael from whatever, 84 until he got to the Wizards. So I, recency bias is real. So I do understand why people think that. Um, but they're wrong. Hey, OutKick fans on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and make your way over to OutKick.com where you can watch the full episode.